The period leading up to the First World War in the Balkans was a time of great confusion. Most of the nations there had only recently become independent from the Ottoman Empire, and national, ethnic, and religious tensions ran high. Nowhere did this hold more true, though, than the Principality of Albania. I'm Indy Nidell. Welcome to a Great War special episode about Albania in World War I. Albania was actually the last of the Balkan nations to declare its independence from the Ottomans, but let's go back a bit. In the decades before the war, as countries like Serbia and Bulgaria were becoming independent themselves, Albania was in a precarious position. It had its own independence movement, but several of the other newly independent nations considered Albanian land theirs for the taking. Albania had, for the most part, fought alongside the Ottomans in the Russo-Turkish War of 1877 and 78, and the Treaty of San Stefano after that had assigned Albanian land to Montenegro and Greece. As the new century began, Albanian demands for greater freedoms and rights began to cause frequent revolts. But when the First Balkan War erupted in 1912, Albania, still part of the Ottoman Empire, saw its cities and villages occupied in all directions by Serbs, Montenegrins, Greeks, and Bulgarians. This finally prompted the Albanian Declaration of Independence, November 28, 1912, which was immediately ignored by all of the occupying neighbors. But when the war ended in May 1913, Albanian independence was recognized, though under international control and with half of the lands that Albania had claimed. The Second Balkan War began a month later and ended in August with a strengthening of the Serbian position in the region and Serbian acquisition of Western Macedonia with a predominantly Albanian population. The Balkan Wars, though overshadowed by World War I today, got a lot of attention in the West, particularly because of the wartime atrocities committed by all sides. In fact, the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace specifically wrote about atrocities committed against Albanians in order to transform the ethnic character of regions inhabited by them. Numbers vary widely in various sources, but as many as 120,000 Albanians were killed in the regions occupied by Serbian forces during the wars as Serbia saw access to the sea. Now, the non-occupied regions of Albania drifted into pretty much total chaos at this time. The great powers tried to bring some order to this chaos with an international commission that would govern the country until a prince could be found. This commission was created October 15th. The following day, Esad Pasha, an Ottoman loyalist supported by Serbia, declared the independence of the Republic of Central Albania with the goal of reuniting it with the Ottoman Empire. He held this republic until February 1914. He agreed to step down under pressure from the great powers in exchange for a strong position in the government of Wilhelm zu Fiet, a German officer and noble who had been finally chosen as Prince of Albania. That month, though, the Greek minority of southern Albania, not wishing to be stuck in a country that was predominantly Muslim, declared the Republic of Northern Epirus, which included most of southern Albania. Wilhelm zu Fiet arrived in Albania March 7, 1914, and tribal leaders pledged allegiance to him. He formed a government with Esad Pasha as Minister of War and signed the Corfu Protocol, which gave the rebellious Greek minority autonomy within Albania. Then he began making reforms, such as separating church and state, which were hugely unpopular with the people. In addition, Islamists viewed him as a crusader. The prince, for his part, accused Esad Pasha of double service and conspiracy and had him arrested and taken to Italy. Within days, central Albania was in insurrection. By the time the First World War broke out, Wilhelm had lost control of most of the country. In addition, the Austro-Hungarian Empire demanded he send troops to fight for them, and when he refused, the financial aid he'd been receiving from the empire was cut off. Wilhelm would leave the country September 3rd, 1914, eventually joining the German army on the Eastern Front, which was apparently more pleasant than remaining in Albania. So, power vacuum. Esad Pasha returned from Italy and made a deal with Serbian Prime Minister Nikola Pasic that ceded mostly Christian northern Albania 
to Serbia in exchange for financial aid and military support. Esad took over central Albania with little resistance. Meanwhile, Greek Prime Minister Venizelos made a deal with British Foreign Secretary Edward Gray that allowed Greece to officially invade southern Albania. Shortly after that, Muslim leaders in central Albania rose up against Esad Pasha and by late November he was surrounded in the capital, Durazzo. He was rescued by Italian warships and indeed Italy invaded Valona in December and soon took control of most of the coast from Valona to Durazzo. No major European power protested this invasion because at this time both sides wanted Italy to join them in the First World War while in the north, the Kachaks fought a guerrilla war against the Serbs. In April 1915, the Pact of London was signed that brought Italy into the war. The pact gave Italy a protectorate of most of Albania, southern Albania to Greece, and northern Albania to Serbia and Montenegro. By the end of June, northern Albania had been occupied, though the Albanians resisted the invasion and there was some fierce fighting. In October, Serbia withdrew from Albania to fight the Central Powers invading Serbia, only to return weeks later in the retreat to the sea that would see tens of thousands of Serbian refugees and soldiers die of the freezing weather, starvation, and guerrilla attacks from Albanian forces. Soon, Austria-Hungary controlled all of northern Albania, and the future King Zog of Albania, history's heaviest smoker, I'm not kidding, look him up, King Zog of Albania, the only modern monarch to ever pull out his own gun and return fire on would-be assassins, true story, joined them in taking Durazzo. Many Albanians viewed the Austrians as saviors, but that took a real blow in April 1916 when the Austrians ordered the Albanians to surrender all weapons. You would think that Italy and Austria-Hungary, both occupying Albania, would fight each other there, but you'd be wrong, except for small skirmishes. By autumn 1916, the Allies were beginning to move in the Balkans. The French soon occupied Korcha and declared it an autonomous republic. This meant that French and Italian forces were now connected, and an Albanian rifle regiment was even created in the French army. In June 1917, Italy declared Albanian independence and ousted Esad Pasha. Interestingly enough, especially considering what had gone on prior to the war, there was still no major fighting in Albania. Not till mid-1918, when an Italian offensive captured the Berat region. A month later though, the Central Powers recaptured most of the territory, which is quite interesting because it was the final real military success by the Central Powers in the war. On September 15th, the Allies began the final offensive on the Salonika front, soon defeating Bulgaria and forcing the Austrians to retreat. The Allies destroyed the port of Durazzo on October 2nd, the final major confrontation on Albanian soil. And by November 5th, the whole country was in Allied hands. And what happened then? Well, the political confusion continued. Albania didn't have a recognized government, and Albanians feared that Italy, Greece, and the new Yugoslavia would carve it up. It was U.S. President Woodrow Wilson who spoke up for Albanian independence, and in December 1920, the League of Nations recognized Albania as a sovereign nation and admitted it as a member. Okay, even though this is probably really confusing, it was still only a general outline of what was happening in Albania during the war. You should definitely look it up for yourselves to get a deeper understanding because it's really interesting and almost mind-blowingly confusing. Of all the countries that took part in the First World War, it was in Albania that the Game of Thrones was played the most. Thank you to Lirium Blatza for helping us out with the research for this episode. Now, if you want to learn more about the situation in the Balkans during Serbia's retreat, check out our episode about that right here. If you want to help telling the story of your country in the First World War on our channel, get in touch with our social media guy Flo on Facebook or through our official website. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.